So this is Marin. And normally I would introduce Marin, but I'm trying to be cool like you and just like jump right into it. No one cares about my background. We just want to get into Midheaven. Okay, so we're going to be talking today about Midheavens and like what it might mean. What I wanted to do with you is just like go through the signs in yeah. Midheaven and talk about like what we see when we look at them. Yeah. And I think that people would like that. And they can see like, oh, this is the way that people are seeing me because you're not necessarily seeing people online through the rising. No, like that's the difference I think is rising is behaviorally in person what your personality is. Midheaven is your online persona, reputation, public image. If you're boring, maybe it's your LinkedIn profile. If you're like a kid on TikTok, it's the vibe of that. So there, it's like much more distant. It's not like me behaving around you right now. Um, and there's a difference. So I think, yeah, running through them will be helpful because often people know their personality. They're a little bit blind to what someone around the world might think of them online. So the Aries Medheaven is when we look, or when I look at the Aries Medheaven, I am like genuinely peeved when they don't show authority in a, in a situation. <laughs> like when they don't go after it, when they're not um, strong leaders in a situation. So like if someone is very passive as an Aries Medheaven, they're putting themselves out and they're like, you know, this is what I kind of think or kind of believe. Right. It's awkward. It's awkward, yes. And they, I'm less inclined to like what they're yeah. putting out and like want to view that. And so in the Aries Midheaven is just very aggressive in a way and rams their head. Yeah, yeah. Like for it. I agree. Like Aries Midheaven, the example, I'm going to think a lot in TikTok examples because that's the content that even though I don't scroll, I somehow end up seeing. Um, Aries Midheaven is the person that just their face on a screen says something motivational, very direct, very assertive, does not explain, does not go on and on. They're direct, they're quick, and they're confident. Yeah. So it's a like, position of authority that does not explain themselves and is clear. Like one, like cardinal signs are all about usually one underlying thing. Mutable signs, you can fuck around with like side hustles. Cardinal signs generally have like one thing they're really going after and have a goal towards. Taurus, almost like the same energy as Aries to me, but in a much more beautifully like mm -hmm. aesthetic way. And you want them to be calm, like quality, collected, happy and sweet almost, but you also want them to be authoritative. And I think that this is the only one I'm going to celebrity up and go talk about. Mm -hmm. Like the Marilyn Monroe thing is like this uh, Taurus midheaven of being like, I am an icon. I know I'm going to go after it, but you also mm -hmm. don't want it to be like super masculine. Right. And so if they kind of, if a Taurus Midheaven comes across as super masculine or maybe not even like passive, like just more like aggressive, we're more inclined to be annoyed with yeah. their presence online. Yeah. And if they, but, and also you kind of want them like stable. Yes. If you see them struggling, struggling or like having a problem, it's like, oh, yeah. like freaking out yeah. like being a little bit like anxious or like I can get away with that because I'm Scorpio Midheaven. You want to see me breaking down. Taurus, it's like. What I think of is this uh, girl, I'm not going to name the account. I don't even know her name. I forget it. It's a longer name. But she has these, re I follow her on Instagram. She has these beautiful reels of her, like, cutting a sourdough loaf, spreading hummus on it. And it's, like, in the woodlands. And there's, like, beautiful twinkling lights. And it's, like, the most cozy cottage kitchen. Uh -huh. And it screams towards Midheaven because I don't know her problems. I don't want to know emotionally what's going on with her. But the stable bread cutting and like she makes oats sometimes. It's so <laughs> soothing. Taurus, I'd say, is stable because Taurus midheavens, fixed sign midheavens, generally you are tried and true at one thing over a long period of time. Cardinal signs have a goal they're going after for a long period of time and they're accelerating the goal. Fixed signs, you know your place. You stick to that kind of content and people want you to keep delivering the same shit over and over and over. Of course, like change the color, not me, but like change the color or something, but like they want stability. So they want to know what your niche is. And there's often a, a calm woodsy quality to what you're doing. It's like, it's, it's cute. I love that. Yeah. It's actually like something that, that makes me think about it too, which is the important part about the myth having, if I was cutting bread, you know how many people would give nobody, nobody, nobody would care. Like they would be like, Alyssa, you need to go sad. You would be funny if you're like stabbing. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So with Gemini, um, I always say like for a long time, I thought that the Midheaven and Gemini was about communication, but it's actually just not so much as it is about like knowing the difference between 
uh, like the duality of your own energy because a lot of like Gemini midheavens mostly have Virgo risings. Yes. And Virgo risings aren't like Kurt Cobain. He's not as incredibly like he didn't want to necessarily project himself out there because he's more introverted or like to himself or like the Virgo quality of the feminine mercurial. And then all of a sudden it's like this masculine mercurial up at the yeah. top. So a lot of the, the Gemini men have are like, I've got to go out there. I got to go speak my mind and go do all these things. And you actually don't, um, you need to kind of bring them back down a lot to like be underneath the water and then well, I don't know the water, but like, you know, yeah, underneath, like in, kind of in the Sagittarius fire on the IC, like yeah. go down, burn it all yeah. apart and then come back up. And so we genuinely like Gemini Midheavens when they leave and come back because of that energy. Like, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I don't like the, um, and when they kind of do something sweet and yeah. they kind of do something sour. They're the jester. They are yeah. the jester. So like, I cannot get away with being a jester because jesters like to book a little fun. They like to be a little politically incorrect. Ha ha. It, Scorpio Midheaven can't get away. Gemini Midheavens, we want you to be a little bit unhinged, mischievous suspicious a little bit all over the place we want you to take a mental health break come back six months later with a new blog new perspective we want you jumping around a little bit and mutable sign mid heavens can get away with having multiple side hustles or not having a clear niche in my opinion we want you to be more interesting and keeping our attention span so gemini mid heavens i would say like you need to be smart like you can't actually be like a stupid what like you need to be like mentally on point but like your mental chaos is what we want to see. Yes. And because like says the Sagittarius Midheaven, which is the opposite, everyone wants me to teach. No one really wants the Gemini Midheaven to teach. Right. It's not about that. It is about dancing. Like, yes. You know, dance, like Data dumping. Yes. Yeah. Data dumping. I yeah. love it. Just give up the information. Don't tell me how you got it. Give me yeah. the baby, not the delivery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People like my delivery. Right. Which is funny. Okay, so Cancer Midheavens. Um, I believe that the Cancer Midheaven, it is a cardinal water. And a lot of times I even go down this route, which isn't a good route to go down. But there is like a lot of like misogyny that is like heaved at the Cancer Midheaven for being like too feminine. But not too, it's not about too feminine because there's a lot of very masculine, strong men who have Cancer Midheaven. So for me to go that route is kind of saying to like the entire world, that they're going to experience misogyny in their life. And that's not true at all. Um, it's more like if there is any indication that they are not um, in love with the feminine energy, then we tend to really not like them. Mm -hmm. Like you want the Cancer Midheaven to have like a loving wife or husband. I can like, see what you mean. Yeah. Um, you want them to be nurturing with their body and like even Britney Spears is cancer. I'm going to celebrities, mm -hmm. but like she's got this, uh, the baby voice. Yeah, she does. And like the most uncomfortable thing is seeing her, her home and family life be out of whack. Mm -hmm. Like yes. we want to see her. Okay. We want to see her cozy. So like yeah. cancer man, I think like we want to see you cozy and in your, in your like comfort era. Mm -hmm. like comfort air always it's different than Taurus, where i don't really care about you being woodsy and being stable i want to see you comfy and safe and like exuding that feminine openness and safety even if you're a very masculine man exuding that you have a soft spot in you and your public persona is important because like i don't want to see you riled up i don't want to see you un like unstable i want to see you safe and like love it yes and then even like when you're projecting yourself on the internet, like if you're doing things to help people be more safe right. and like be feeling more right. in their emotional energy, because yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I want to go to a cancer in heaven who's projecting themselves to me. And I want to feel like, like loved by that energy, like, or like just nurtured and mm -hmm. And I don't want to like, experience. like, that's the thing with Britney Spears. You're like, I don't want to receive something from her if she's in turmoil. Yeah. I like can't listen to her music yeah. if she's in turmoil. And that's what I think with the cancer men having like, yeah. I can't look at what you are if there's something wrong in your life yeah. because yeah. they like lose their power completely. Yeah. And so that's the most important thing is cancer men having keeps yeah. them home. So then the Leo men have in, we're actually talking about this, but Leo has a lot of like, it's theatrics. It's also a lot of horror. Yeah. Marilyn Manson for Leo. Yeah, we were talking about how like I have a ton in Leo, not my Midheaven, 
and I love very heavy music, uh, like metalcore, deathcore, and I also like horror films. And a lot of people that I'm now like working with with things in that side of the industry are oh my god, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Midheaven, and Leo all over the place. And I think that Leo has extreme playfulness. There's extreme play. And there's nothing more playful than taking the darkest, grossest things in life and somehow mm -hmm. making them pretty. Yeah. Like, there's nothing more playful than that. So, ton of, like, Leo has um, an edginess to it that often doesn't involve horror or gore. Yes. And there's the whole, like, um, there's, a, there's a weird spiritual side or, like, undertone of spirituality because three of my favorite pop girlies, uh, Lana... Halsey and Katy Perry. They all Leo Manhattan. They all Leo Manhattan. And they all are very kind of tongue in cheek about certain things. And some of like, well, Lana goes out and is this like, you know, I'm a dragon, you're a whore. Yeah. And then you got Katy Perry, who's like very tongue in cheek, yeah. but very theat but they're both very theat theatrical. Yeah, cool. And then Halsey is very in very different ways. But they've all, each one of them have gone for myth, religion, spirituality. Yes. And so is Marilyn Manson. Um, a lot of his music yeah. was spiritual or whatever. So I think he goes with the there's a valor and a a, a heroic quality to Leo that likes to be this the main character, but like in a religious spectacle. Not Jesus, no, no, no. But like the main character in like a, a novel or a spectacle. And I think that's why Leo Midheavens, I mean, with you think of like Lana Halsey, Katy Perry, their personality is the center of their their personality, their character is the center of their celebrity like Halsey Alana they're Katie, Katie like they're great they're good vocal they're great vocalists and their personality is part of it versus like a band where you're like oh yeah the singer is a very talented vocalist like their personality your with Leo Van Heavens we want to see your personality your character your fun side your assets show through it's less about honestly it's less about your talent and more about your personality with Leo it is yeah. it is it's it's we want to see the the great like yeah entertainment. Because Lana's songs are all the most vocally challenging, but her style, her her like vibe, that's what makes Lana mm -hmm. Lana. That's yeah, it's the whole the whole thing. Like they are the reason for the aesthetic, and they can yeah. change it, and they can still be good. And I think that's something too. Like the Leo Midheaven doesn't have to keep the same thing going, right? Though it will be jarring when they change it. But when they change it, it gets more exciting again because it's exactly. just an adventure with them. Exactly. Yeah. So the Virgo Midheaven is really fun because <laughs> I used to believe that the Virgo Midheaven was kind of this boring vibe. But I realized more so lately, it's not a boring vibe. It's a laid back, calm energy. So mm -hmm. even if they're dressed up and they're like performing like Justin Bieber or something or... yeah. Um, I think Kim Kardashian has Virgo Midheaven, but I don't know for sure. But like, there's just an energy of like them being very stable in what they do, even if um, they're performing. Right. And there's almost an earthy energy that carries with them that they are like the pinnacle of our reality. So Virgo Midheavens can go like super far just by being themselves like just thinking like the kim like athleisure i wasn't even going to kim because i wasn't sure about it but i'm doing it anyway justin bieber and like his like crappy white t-shirts and it's like there's just this energy of like i am living my life and i am stable in this energy and that's what i see like when people want the virgo midheaven to do is just they don't want them to necessarily perform at all yeah but they still are performing yeah i'd say Virgo midheavens are great at the illusion of perfection and having it all together. And we want to see that. We want to see you organizing your room with all the containers. We want to see, I think Kim is a really good example of Virgo midheaven because she, Virgo midheavens are very polite, very, very publicly polite PR, very on point. She does not go out there and have a bunch of tweets, videos of her saying problematic shit. Anything problematic is like the, it, it's like, industry oriented financial cultural larger issues justin does not have a bunch of erratic horrible things on i mean everyone has some things but nothing to the degree of like controversy so like virgo men heavens i think of it they have it all together they have something beautifully aesthetic to show for that with the neutrals and it's like we want to join in on them we're getting like organizer porn or pimple popping porn yes yeah. yes yeah that's what it is too. and like the um 
I was thinking too, Justin's only biggest things have been through his Pisces sun, which are on his eye, like, yeah, his eye, which are drugs. Because what we want to see is that they're clean. And Kim's always come out and been like, I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. And you're like, that's good. Cause you want to see them as like, very pure, pure. very pure yeah. as opposed to, yeah, to the Pisces men have been, which yeah. you could almost, you want to see them <laughs> like off the rails. Yeah. After, yeah. It's an, insane. But yeah, Virgo, like I, if a Virgo men haven't started doing like ticket cards or something, they would have a really hard time. They would. they would. Cause yeah. that's like all over the place. Yeah, it is. You want to see them like, what can you do? That's practical. Yeah. My God. Why can I think of words? Practical. I'm good. Like me, I don't have Virgo men heaven, but me doing pick a card would be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm right. Like, man, what are you doing? Yeah. Like that's just, <laughs> you don't have intuition. Even yeah, though you do. I, 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 not in the same way. Not the same way. No. Same way. Yeah. Your intuition. Actually, the North Node conjunct the Sun, I feel like it's incredibly psychic. However, it's also like because it keeps turning over. It's no one else's. I yeah. cannot read for you. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. But when I know things are in alignment, it's like nothing will stop me. Yeah. Like so clear. But like pick a car, bitch. I don't care about you. Yeah. That's a, that is the Virgo practicality. Of the Libra yeah. Midheaven, there is a tendency to like want the Libra Midheaven to do relationship stuff because Libra, mm -hmm. as much as we don't, um, I don't as a Libra want to say it's all about relationship. It fucking is like, that's my life. Like as much as I don't want it to be. So when we look at the Libra men heaven, we're like, you want to do like relational stuff. Do you want to give me, um, not even advice. We don't want the Libra necessarily to give advice, although it's air and it's cardinal. It's not like the teacher because it almost doesn't seem like it's, yeah, it's not the teacher. It's not the teacher. It's like not balanced in that way. And you want to see it. It's the sister or the best friend. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and having just like a good time, like your sister and then your moon even, I feel like you can utilize and then yeah. be like, I'm your friend. This is like what we're doing. But like when you have an actual Libra mid heaven, you're out there in the world being adorable. Yeah. Even like flirting. Yeah, you're flirting with the audience in order to give them exactly um what like what would make them want to date you yeah you're, you're dating you. yeah there's something romantic about libra midheavens that don't it doesn't mean that you have you're giving dating advice or doing dating but there's something romantic and like um fairy tale about yeah. what you're doing like i want you to have the romantic fairy tale even if you are like a chef i want to see you cutting that food beautifully i don't want to see you like with a an Aries in heaven, I want to see like karate chop the tofu. Like with a Libra in heaven, I want to see like garnishing the cilantro. Um, and I think with Libra in heavens as well, there's an element to bringing balance into chaos. Where I want to see you take a really big situation and like offer a perspective um, or like a judicial point of view. So I think Libra in heavens, you don't need to have it all figured out or like resolve the situation, but bringing a little bit of beauty or romance into our lives through something and not trying to be the teacher or the know-it-all, but like the big sister who has our best interests. Cause like my sister is a triple Libra and she's like the best, but like, she's not a teacher. Like she just, she's who like texts me about like, Oh, funny meme or real or something. So yeah, yeah it's pretty. And yeah. we don't want you to be, I mean, I do whatever the fuck you want, but like, we don't really like to see the Libra mid heavens polarizingly starting shit. We yeah. don't want you to be the one who's like, I got a, something to say. No, 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 you don't. You don't. I want to pretend that you're just a pretty face and like, yeah. The harmonizers. Yeah. So we won. So the Scorpio Midheaven, which is you. Yeah. Scorpio Midheavens, I've just noticed are like, it's, it's sex, but you don't have to forcibly put yourself in a position of sex for it to be sex. Yeah. Like it carries on, like all life is sex. It's also like intimacy and vulnerability and death and rebirth. There's a lot of energy of like the Phoenix yeah. um, that nothing can really keep you down and that you're like fighting for survival. And I feel like when you're looking at somebody who's a Scorpio in heaven, you're, you enjoy that fight. Yeah. Right. And so there's that with every single person, um, when they're looking at a Scorpio man, okay. Say like you or Megan Fox, there's just, um, what's it called? You're, you want to look at them and be like, you want, I want you to come back. Like I'm going to say, I'm not going to watch your movie. I'm not going to watch your, yeah. your TikTok anymore. But like, when you come back, I'm all for it. Yeah. Like they just like, people get a hard on when you, when you're back. Yeah. Or like with Megan, with people always giving her a hard time about whatever she posts with MGK, but you're in her comments, like either hyping her up or being like, sis ain't it. Like there's this, 
more than any other men have a love-hate relationship with anything from Scorpio men have it's I think because it's such a polarizing placement where they might do nothing overtly sexual they might simply be existing but the things that they have to do are so distinct and so intense usually aesthetically and action wise that they tend to get people on both sides but like it's kind of like a reality show where you can't deny that it's really in it's, it's really enjoyable it is yeah and yeah because the pluto is the polarizing and it's the darkness of the world but i feel like the scorpio in heaven we want to see it so bad but it also represents a part of our life that we don't want to yeah see. there's this more 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 like Taurus, I don't want to see you vulnerable. I don't want to see you whatever. Scorpio midheavens, I tend to want to see the intricacies of their life. Like their lowest lows, their highest highs. They are really good vloggers. Yes. Yes. And powerful. There's a strength and a power. Like it's a special Scorpio midheavens just have so much power at their, um, at their, well, it's not the 10th house cusp unless you do, if you do whole sign the midheavens at it can fall anywhere. Fall anywhere yeah. in your houses. But yeah. it's either the ninth or tenth and last it is, and it really doesn't matter. Your midheaven's not gonna change. Yeah. But it's a lot, it's about your projection of reality and people's projected back onto you. So when Scorpio and you think about Scorpio as being the most powerful sign, it means you're probably gonna get hard, get hit hard, but you also have a very strong sense of protection. Yeah, exactly. There. And yeah. everything eventually washes all over you. Yeah. And so people do wanna see you be more polarizing. And so if there's a fear about that, about going for it um have no fear because you're yeah that. yeah like they people want us to have the eras mm -hmm. and like the transformations so. they, they do so the sagittarius yeah. med heaven which is the one that i have this is it's annoying because it is the teacher but it's not it doesn't have to be the boring teacher right <laughs> no it's, it's, it's the girl yeah. yeah and it's fun and it's but jupiter actually because it is the spouse in the chart or the husband i have a video on how i Said that it's the progression of the wife too that it's both and that it's about uh which well it's a jupiter juno twin flame energy because jupiter mm -hmm. and juno are twins but juno's an asteroid so it's talking about how jupiter and jupiter are technically they should be both the husband and the wife in the chart and that was this video that i did because i've been working on the idea that venus is not a wife no and juno is an asteroid and so where do you go when you start talking about like jupiter and that counterpart that is big as blessing as Jupiter because even mm -hmm. Venus is never no. as bad as that. Venus is like your fucking music taste. It's not exactly, like, and that's why Libra Midheaven or Taurus Midheaven is like, let's see that, let's yeah. see that cute music taste. But for me, like nobody wants that shit. Even though I'm like, yeah, look at me, like I like Lana. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Alyssa. Like, yeah. where's your astrology? Teach, yeah, yeah, teach. And so Jupiter is the guru, is the teacher, which is what for centuries relied on the man for the husband for to teach the woman but what happens when the woman rises so as far as the Sagittarius men heaven is it's like man or woman you are going to rise up to a position of spirituality or teaching in some way teaching some form of energetic like I'm going to explain the secrets of the universe to you and that's kind of what people want but if you're not like you if you're not feeling like you're the most intelligent person like for and since I really am a Libra and I like Starbucks and Chipotle, like I just love my favorite foods, right? Yeah. But on my midheaven, nobody wants to see that. They don't want me to dissect Chipotle and be like, this is why it's better than like some majorly good authentic whatever. Or like talk about how Starbucks is better than this really cute coffee shop in like yeah. the downtown area. No one wants me to talk about that because they kind of want me to be a little bit more pretentious or like above yeah like when i think about sag mid heavens i want them to philosophically get me to ponder something i want them to leave me with a lasting intelligent impression i don't want them to show me anything that's low level because i feel like it's like that's beneath your pay grade like like the tourist men have it i'd be like oh sourdough sad cherries men have it i'm like no give me av advice or perspective or like new manifesting mm -hmm. things so I like them, that I like the way they inspire provoking thought and they don't need to be precise. I'd yeah. say that rhetorical questions and thought, think pieces, performance art can work very well for Sagittarius because they're big picture. They're not detailed. You don't. Yes. Yeah. And actually, in fact, when I am totally in my midheaven mode and I am like knowing that I'm going to put something out into the world, I, <laughs> I just did it. I glitch in a way because I know that I have to access all of my energy that like mm -hmm. I've ever accessed in my entire life yeah. to figure out how to make this like advice 
And it's, a, it's an interesting energy. It's like expansive. And so a lot of times the Sagittarius myth, how they, we can get out there and we can do really cute, chuggy shit. I don't even know if chuggy is a word, but that's what I've been calling myself because it's already not a word probably. And that's how I feel. But like we can do this stupid cringe, whatever, but um, it's fun, but you tend to really fly when you're giving people insight into their lives. Yeah. Like, so if I go and like dance on TikTok, no one's really going to care. But yeah. if I say, this is why like your mother hurt you, people are like, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? How do you know yeah. that? And like, because I, you know, you've right. lived it or you've researched it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a learned place. You don't want to project yourself until you have learned. And so a lot of sad men have to grow into that. And they find themselves a villain before they find themselves a hero. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of Scorpio Midheavens too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like Scorpio Midheavens often are not like there's like I'm not like I see Scorpios are like I'm not the good one here often. They're like, do not look up to me. And the Sagittarius is often like, don't take my word for it. Like yeah. I am not the final say. I'm just a messenger. Yeah. Okay. And then you kind of go to the Capricorn Midheaven, which the Capricorn Midheaven is the diva. Even. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. It's I like I think of it as like the color gold, and I always want to think about Capricorn in like the mountain, and I'm like, it, but it's not it's not brown or like green and outside earth energy. It is literal. Like I found gold in California. There's this gold rush, and so when the Capricorn Midheaven's like, I'm so earthy and down to earth, and I'm just doing this. People are like, shut up. I want to see you like you've made it you've achieved, yeah. you've accomplished, you are on top of this, like... They want to see competence at all costs. Yes, yeah. they do. And they don't want to see you going through the motions or learning or teaching. Yeah. They want to see, like, look at you've done this. You've... You have arrived. Yeah, it's not the, like, flipping houses full thing. It's like, no, just show me the TikTok of the luxury home. So yes. I think Capricorn's, like, it doesn't mean that you can't be improving yourself, but professionally, we want to see that you have attained a certain level of success to inspire us. Yes. And the, <laughs> I was thinking Mariah Carey is a Capricorn in heaven, I'm pretty sure. And it's like her diva energy has never been the thing that's broken her back. Yeah, you're, you're right. She's, when people are like, oh, Mariah's a diva, she deserves it. Yeah. If the Capricorn in heaven just knows that they deserve it, because I think a lot of times too, the, we can be worried about ego and the wrong midheavens tend to project more ego. Yeah. And the Capricorn midheaven is probably the one that has a grounded enough midheaven. We respect it. Respect it. it yes. Yeah. So you're like, if you come on, you're like, I've done this. I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, wait, never mind. Thank you. Someone else. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I feel like, uh, the best kind of statements the Capricorn midheaven can make too are like, uh, short and sweet statements. Yeah. They just, this is, I am. No, I, no over explaining. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you over explain it, people get bored and it drags on. It reeks of like insecurity and you're like, just, just, no, no, no. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the Aquarius myth heaven, I used to believe was like edgy or rebellious until I put them all together and realized they're fucking pure angels and they can't do shit wrong. They're yeah. like fucking prophets. Um, they could go up and like see the world and or do something horribly crazy and people would be like oh that's sweet yeah and uh, it's weird too because i, I think the energy of the machine gun kelly is in a crazy mm -hmm. which is funny because um the more edgy that he gets the more people are like you're not really edgy. yeah that's fake <laughs> yeah you're not like that. And for some reason it projects itself out like that. And I think yeah. it's because it's like, you're my teacher. Like Aquarius is like, you're the prophet. Just yeah. your coolest when you're, when there's like a, I'm allowed to view you as pure. Yeah. Like Aquarius is the kind of leader where we want to see, we, we want to see them at their best and we don't want to have to see them at their worst. Like Pisces Midheaven is actually the edgy, like we want to see you starving artists kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Aquarius Midheaven is we want to see all the good deeds you've done. We want to see the positive accomplishments you've done. It's a little bit different than Capricorn because with Aquarius, we want to view a little bit more about your personality and more about like, why are you inspiring? Like what type of motivational, inspirational thing? 
it's not like Sagittarius where we want you to directly teach us a how-to or a belief system. We more so want to feel like you've evoked a sense of inspiration because we just watched a beautiful montage or you showed us a silent or uh, like you didn't speak but you showed us your little house on a hill and it's like a beautiful you know compilation so it's um more it has the edge of like uh i don't want to use altruistic because that's overused with aquarius but there's a inspirational quality that is uh, we don't want to see through the veil and we want it to be um we don't want it to be too uh worldly even we want it to be like thought-provoking inspirational like when you look at an aquarius men have a they even if they do have problems or like they're they are edgy and they're just naturally like that there's such a sweetness to them that you just kind of want to give them a hug i have a very good friend who's an aries rising with an aquarius midheaven and this person has like severe behavioral and like just like he's a great i mean would know that i'm saying this he acts the fuck out all the time on like what the fuck like he's not rude or mean he'll yeah. just do things that are like what but in work and like in the career oh my god this angel like we love him we like he's just so, so great at fulfilling his needs so there's this like god complex of getting away with yes it is i feel like and i feel like he's this no like whatever yeah. guys i'm gonna get away with this they can usually like, do oh. it at the end of the day they usually yeah. can provide at the end of the day yes pisces now pisces is like the essence of <laughs> the dirty grimy yeah edgy. yeah you were saying some good stuff about it so you can lead it off yeah too we want to see pisces in the fucking trenches in their journey like the like the like there are people vlogging like this is oh this is a really morbid example i guess but like last year there were people vlogging like during the war in ukraine like fucking like gopro on their neck that is kind of like piscean-esque where i don't want to see the refined 4k 1080p whatever i want to see you just like raw unfiltered creativity so with pisces and midheavens it's often about what are you excited about now? What do you want to post now? If you are not excited about it, if it feels too manufactured or forced, I would say with all the water sign midheavens, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, overly manufactured or curated online content rarely works because we can tell that there's not the emotional tie to it or excitement. Other, like Capricorn, it works. Capricorn, I want to see the fucking jump cut, everything. But with Pisces, we want to see like in the trenches, the creativity, the journey, the tears, the relatable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And I like, I feel like to you, you want the, you want the rough pictures, like almost like you could get away with not spelling words right. And like, if you went out and were like, I am, um, I did this, I killed somebody. Um, we want to know about it and we're going to be like, oh yeah, we're going to like keep watching. Mm -hmm. Like if it was like the Aquarius would have it to be like, I killed someone. It'd be like, sweet angel. He, he probably like, it was probably self-defense. Mm -hmm. And the Pisces would have, we might be like, you fucking murderer, keep talking, you know, like keep telling me about that. I'm not going to like, you know, put you in jail for this. I'm actually very interested. Yeah. We're not super judgmental with Pisces. Like, no. like other damage. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're damaged. Like that's cool. Like it, yeah. it is, there's a very strong like evil energy to it that we can't look away from. In the same vein of the Scorpio mid heaven is harder because it's more polarizing, but Pisces is just like, just come down to the dark. So yeah. this depth yeah. with me and like the, the more that the Pisces mid heaven floats up at top and is like, no, I'm real. I'm a real person. I like, I'm just totally normal and cool. The more we're like, it's shut like, up. Yeah. 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 Just be dark and weird. Tell yeah. me about your problems. I want to like, I want to know more about your problems because uh -huh. I'm like getting off on that. Yeah. 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 That was this mid heaven video. Um, I am going to have some more on my channel, but I really wanted Mary to come and talk because she's in a genius at the mid heaven. Um, anyway, guys, I will talk to you later.